Hey guys, uh, today I would like to show you how to create public groups and explain a little bit about the usefulness of a public group and why you would want to create it. Uh, this video is intended for beginning administrators or those of you out there uh, studying to become administrators. So let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing to know is that only system administrators can create public groups. So your normal users out there in sales, marketing, and whatever departments you have, they're not going to be able to create public groups. You're going to have to be a system administrator to do that. Uh, there's a lot of useful purposes for public groups. So a, lot of, a few of the ways that they're used are, number one, in sharing rules. Uh, public groups are an awesome way to share settings, say that you want to make contacts private for the organization-wide defaults, but for in particular users, you want to make those, you want to make contacts public. So say you have a group uh, called contacts public group, um, and this is just a group of users you want contacts to be public to. You can add users into that group. It doesn't matter what profiles, roles, anything like that they have. You add them into the group. You apply a sharing setting for that particular group. And then they, those particular users can see all contacts in the system where everyone else cannot. And you can add and take members away from that group as you need to. I'm sure you can understand uh, how that could be useful in other situations for different types of sharing. Another way to use them are for sharing access for public reports and dashboard folders. So if you create a public report or dashboard folder uh, for executives, for instance, and you have sales executives and marketing executives and technology executives and things of that nature, they're not all going to have the same profile. So you create a public group, put the executives from each one of those teams into a public group and then you can give them access through the public report and dashboard settings on a public folder or, or dashboard folder. So another way you can use them is to add multiple members to Salesforce CRM content libraries. So normally you would go through and add them one member at a time to content libraries. Uh, with public groups, you just create a group that all need to see this library and you just grant access to that public group. And another way you can use public groups is to assign users to specific actions in Salesforce knowledge. Uh, I won't get too into that. Um, if you want to look into that, then I would recommend uh, first brushing up on Salesforce knowledge in general. All right, so let's go ahead and get started in actually creating a public group. So first, make sure you're in your setup menu. All right, and then we'll come over to the left-hand side and we'll just type groups. You can see right away under manage users, we have public groups. And I have no public groups in this uh, development org, so I'll create a new one. We'll label this one first group. And we can see here we can grant access using hierarchies. And our pop-up here says, when selected, any records shared with users in this group are also shared with users higher in the role hierarchy. So what that means is if you were to share, uh, as we had said, contacts uh, with a public group called first group, if you were to open up contacts to them, then anyone above them in the role hierarchy would also be able to see those. Um, so I would recommend probably turning this off. Um, unless you have situationals where you find that it, it makes sense for you to use it. So you can see, first off, we can add other public groups into new public groups. So if you had a public group called marketing executives, another one called sales executives, then we could create a new public group called marketing and sales executives and add those two public groups in. We can also use uh, add to groups based on roles roles and anyone below them in the role hierarchy, and then users. So usually I would think that users would be your most uh, common use for adding people in. So 
Uh, I'll just add myself to this public group. And we'll save that. And the pop-up there just was letting me know that the managers uh, and people higher in the role hierarchy won't be included. So now we can see that we have this first group, public group. We have one member, myself. If we click edit up here, we have the ability to come down and add more users to the group if we wanted to. Um, I'm not going to do that right now. We can also go to my user record. And we'll come over here to get to the... Detail, I believe. Let's see if I can't get to the user detail. I just want to show you that from the user perspective, uh, you can also see which public groups they are in. Here we go. So if you actually get to a user detail page, it depends on which uh, release of Salesforce you're using, how you get to this. Here we go, advanced user details. And so for myself, you can see that we have a new public group membership related record right here. And it is showing that for me, Bradley Rice, that I have a public group membership first group now. So you can see how that is a related list on the user record right here. So uh, you can come in and create a new group from here also. Um, we're not going to do that right now. Um, so anyway, that is a short video on how to create public groups and the usefulness of having public groups. Uh, I would recommend also watching uh, my videos about reports and dashboard folders uh, cre and creating sharing rules. Um, and those might give you a better idea of how we incorporate public groups. All right, thanks for watching, everybody. And good luck with your studying of Salesforce.